<clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we just had a fascinating discussion at lunch with Condoleezza Rice and her views about the current world situation. What I heard was that we have a worldwide problem. It's actually more complicated than it was after the Berlin Wall came down. If you all recall, we actually were th thinking the Russians were not going to be the way they had been under the Soviet Union. China was not yet viewed as a national security threat. After 9-11, we thought we'd only be dealing with terrorism. Now we have terrorism and we have big power competition. So this is the broadest threat uh, to the democratic world than we've had since before the Berlin Wall came down. I think Senate Republicans are going to take a good hard look at the supplemental request. We're probably going to have a number of changes we want to make in it. And of course, we want a credible, a very credible border security part of this bill. But speaking for myself, I do think it needs to be comprehensive. I think it needs to deal with all of these because they're all interrelated. I mean, what we have now is an axis of evil, China, Russia, and Iran. Iran taking care of funding all of these uh, terrorists, being backed up by these two big countries. And you saw that uh, uh, President Xi said that uh, he and the, uh, the Chinese and the Russians are going to be friends forever. So this is a big crisis that needs to be confronted by the most important democracy in the world. I was among those who just returned from a, a trip to uh, the Middle East, uh, including a stop in Israel. And um, it's been 17 days now since the October 7th attack. Uh, but I will tell you that the um, video and images continue to come in. The uh, barbaric, brutal, just absolutely brutal attacks uh, were nothing less than despicable. Uh, these were heinous um, and, and just uh, unbelievable uh, violations of, of, uh, of humanity. And so as we, um, as we think about how to respond, uh, clearly the Israelis can't abide having a terrorist organization living right on their border. Um, Hamas has to be eliminated and we should aid and support in every way possible uh, the Israelis as they endeavor to do just that. Um, and of course we have to remember that the animating force behind the evil in that region of the world is, as the leader pointed out, Iran. It is Iran that finances uh, more than 90 percent of the weaponry uh, training and everything that Hamas does. Uh, they are the um, force behind their other proxy on the northern border of Israel, the Hezbollah, and of course uh, the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, the Shiite militias, Shiite militias that are militias that are attacking uh, our troops in Syria and Iraq. This is a an evil regime whose clear objective is to kill Jews and to wipe Israel off the map. Uh, that's the reality that is confronting the leaders in Israel right now. And um, Hamas, when they uh, committed these incredibly violent and brutal acts, also preserved it, posted it on social media, celebrated it in front of the rest of the world. This evil has to be confronted. It has to be dealt with. And uh, we need to do everything we can to support and defend our friend and our ally, Israel. And I hope that everyone in the neighborhood, countries in that area and beyond, will step up and do what they can to ensure that this kind of evil, this kind of terror, this reign of terror that the Israel is uh, that Israel the Israelis deal with on a daily basis is, uh, is stopped in its tracks, and that that region of the world can actually pursue uh, peace and security 
uh, for their people. And uh, we ought to be doing everything we can to make that happen. And, and by the way, I would just simply too, the administration needs to stay focused on getting the hostages out. There are a number of Americans who have been impacted by this, and we met with many families who uh, uh, are family members of hostages that are being held in Gaza today. And uh, I would just urge the administration to work with our uh, regional partners to ensure they're doing everything possible to get those hostages back safe and sound. God bless Israel and, of course, God bless our Jewish brothers and sisters. So we saw on October 7th the savage attack of Hamas across the border. Uh, they broke through the border between the Gaza Strip and Israel. And we saw the savagery that followed after that attack and border crossing. And here in the United States, we have an open border, which terrorists and nations of special security interest are taking advantage of. We have seen over 8 million illegal entries into the United States since Joe Biden took office. Just in recent months, we have seen the number of those of coming from special interest com countries increase. 8,000 last month alone. And CBP says that's uh, an increase of 1,000 individuals over August. We have seen 171 people on the terrorist watch list come across the border since Joe Biden took office. Israel had a secure border where terrorists advanced. Here in the United States, we have an open border where terrorists advance. We can't continue to allow people to illegally enter our country, putting our own national security at risk. And I'm asking the administration to step up. Don't forget our friends in Israel. Don't forget them. Stay on this. But also, let's make sure we learn from this lesson and secure our own border and protect our own citizens right here in the homeland. Hello, everybody. I'd like to also reemphasize what uh, Senator Ernst has said uh, in terms of our own southern border. We saw what happened in uh, Israel with a border that was supposedly uh, secure, and we saw with the will of the reign of terror how those borders can be broken through. And so when we got the numbers, interestingly, the numbers were dumped on Friday night at about 5 or 6 o'clock. For the month of September, 269,735 illegal encounters on our southern border, the highest month ever in the history of our keeping the statistics of uh, illegal um, encounters at our southern border. The highest number ever. Um, over, as she said, over 5 million during the course of the Biden administration, 2.4 over this year at all, at, alone. How many times have we at this podium, all of us, said to the president and, the, and, and those that are in, uh, in a ability to make a decision and to change policy, how many times have we talked about this? with no reasonable policy or change of policy to change this behavior. And now we have documented terrorists coming through. The American people are very upset about this in every state. Every state's a border state now. And we all know how much this is influenced. So, so when we look at what this supplemental is going to do, the last thing we should be doing in border policy is making more beds available or making it easier to go faster through the border so that you can wait another eight to nine years to get your asylum claim. That is a non-starter for all of us. This needs to be deterrence, needs to be a change in policy, it needs to be make sure that what we're going to do is see these numbers come down, not just by a little bit, but very, very measurably. So I look forward to the negotiations that are going to be going forward. Uh, certainly all of these things are exceedingly important, but today this focus on our southern border is something that we cannot lose sight of 
in terms of how this affects our own national security, but the effects that it has globally as well. Thank you. So the State Department has designated the following four countries as state sponsors of terror. Cuba, Iran, North Korea, and Syria. Since October 1st, hundreds of individuals from these four countries alone have entered the United States that we know of. In September, it was more than a thousand been encountered by Border Patrol from those four countries labeled as state sponsors of terror by our country. A memo from the San Diego Border Patrol Intelligence Division just this past Friday warned of Hamas and Hezbollah terrorists crossing the border. Here's the warning went out Friday. Foreign fighters of Israel-Hamas conflict may potentially be encountered at the southwest border. And as Senator Capito just mentioned, as well as Senator Ernst, we're seeing record, an all-time record level of encounters in the month of September, which finished up the fiscal year, setting an all-time record for any fiscal year for encounters by Border Patrol under Joe Biden. And that doesn't even include the 1.6 million known gotaways, as well as how many unknown gotaways. We don't even have a number for that. Where are the people from these hotbeds of terror? The administration does not know. It is only a matter of time before something happens in our country in terms of a terror attack on our soil. This is no longer just an immigration issue. This is a national security crisis in the making. Not only is it shattering previous records in this administration, but showing a chilling trend that potential terror threats are using Biden's open border as an opportunity to flood our country. And look, that supplemental the Biden administration proposed up here is a joke. It is not about throwing more money at the border. We've got to slow the flow. It's about changing the policies. They don't need a lot more money in the southern border. They need to change the policies to remove the incentives to come across our southern border. Joe Biden and Senate Democrats need to get serious about the safety of our country, our national security, and secure the southern border before it's too late. I would just add one thing before taking questions. It's pretty clear that uh, the supplemental that was sent up is just a starting place. Uh, we're we're going to go over it with a fine-tooth comb. As you can see, there's a lot of passion among our members about having a credible border security provision in there, and uh, we're going to make other changes as well. What is your expected timeline for negotiating a supplemental here in the Senate? And if the border security provisions slow it down, would you be open to moving Israel money separately? Well, I'll take the last first. I, I, I along with uh, Secretary Condoleezza Rice and the administration, feel that this is a worldwide problem and needs to be dealt with entirely, not in pieces. In terms of the timing, that'll be up to Senator Schumer. The Appropriations Committee is going to have a hearing next week. Uh, our members, now that we have the package, are scrubbing it uh, for recommended changes. And um, I think it will, except for the fact that it's worldwide, I think it'll end up having a number of Republican changes. Now, now that Secretary or Jack Lew has had his confirmation hearing, will you be supporting his nomination to be Ambassador of Israel? Yeah, I don't have any announcements to make on that today. Leader McConnell, there's great concern right now that this conflict is going to expand into a regional war, possibly dragging in the U.S. along with it. There's already contingency plans being worked out to bring American citizens home from the region. Are you worried about that? About that? And do you support sending in U.S. troops if Israel needs it? Well, first, your question confirms what I just said earlier. I view this as a worldwide problem, both the terrorism problem that we're experiencing in Israel and occasionally against us, and a big power problem in Afghanistan. Uh, in uh, uh, Ukraine and um, with the Chinese linking up with the Russians. That's a fairly new thing. And we have a worldwide problem that requires a worldwide response. 
drafted by us, and that's one thing that we're, I, conceptually, I agree that we have a worldwide problem. In terms of the details of it, we're going to have a lot of recommendations. But, but aside from an aid package, what yeah. about U.S. troops? Yeah, I, I'm not going to. It depends on conditions. I, I have no way of projecting what might be needed down the way. Well, we we have a group that Senator Thune has been meeting with, trying to come up with what we think is a credible border proposal. I, I can tell you what it probably will not be is sending a bunch of money to Chicago and New York. Uh, we want to do something about the problem, the problems at the border. Thank you.